Thanks, guys. Uh, Jules, you again found your way to the top of our screen, mate. I'm not sure if you want to kick it off with these two. Right. Okay. Age before beauty, as they say. <laughs> um, maybe a question for Max uh, to kick off with. Um, it's just been such a roller coaster season for you. Um, I just, uh, just so what was your reaction to uh, to getting picked? And just as a sort of follow up to that, what 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 are you doing with your uni? Um, are you taking a break? Are you deferring? Um, what are, how are you or are you going to study while you're over there? Where, where's all that at? Um, I'll start off. Um, I was yeah. I, I wouldn't say I was like I was pretty surprised when I found out. Um, especially coming coming off the back of a, a pretty big knee injury, so it was a bit of a shock um, to get the call. But um, yeah, I was I was cheering, so it was good. And um, with the uni, yeah, I'm taking taking a break um, off that for this semester. Uh, I'll defer for this this semester and probably pick it pick it back up next year. Uh, Max, where are you in that sort of re rehab and recovery process? Will you be right for that France game? What's the kind of timeline you can tell us? Um, yeah, I'm definitely at the back end of it. Uh, probably only two, two, three more weeks. So um, I think I should be sweet for that first game. And this time off, has it given you a chance to really reflect on just how well win this 12 months has been? I mean, I'm guessing 12 months ago, you probably still still at Joey's going through. A lot of final, year, final sort of months of school, you're now it's set to be on a plane to France. Has it all just sunk in yet? Yeah? yeah, definitely. Um, gave me a lot of time to reflect and yeah, it was just awesome just looking back at the season I've had and how quick things have moved and then seeing myself and where I am now, it's just, yeah, it's just unreal. Max, you said on the TV the other night, you found out by yourself and then rang the folks. What did Wednesday night look like for you? Did you go out for a celebratory feed or was it straight to the airport? Nah, just yeah, pretty much straight into packing my bags and then had a had a final feed at home with the family. Um, yeah, before heading to the airport that next morning, so it's pretty pretty rushed all everything, but that nah, was good. And just to go back a couple of steps, when you did that injury um, immediately, did you think you were cooked for the rest of the year? And then can you just explain to us? When it kind of emerged that maybe you could get some more rugby in, have you been with the Tars, have you been with Wallaby staff working on that rehab and just talk us through that two month sort of block? Uh, yeah, definitely. When I when I first did the injury, um, I took it pretty hard. Like like I knew once I did it, like I knew my knee was, was pretty cooked. But um, yeah, the, the first four weeks of the injury was pretty devastating. Um, yeah, as I said, I took it pretty hard, but just bounced, bounced straight back up into my rehab. Had some, had a good couple of boys around me, the Tars, getting me through it. Um, and by the end of it, I, I sort of just grinded through my rehab and then, yeah, just got the call. It was, yeah, awesome. Was there a moment when you thought that the Wallabies thing might still be alive? Like, I understand there were some conversations had. Like, was there a point when you thought, okay, maybe this is not totally out of the picture here? Um, I think I always had that hope. Um, I don't know how much hope I had, but I, it was always there. I was just hoping to have my chance to um, play for the Wallabies. But um, yeah, it was always there. So, uh, Max, sorry if I, I'm not jumping in again. I, I hope, but um, Eddie made a big thing about how this is kind of a generational change, and that he's put in all his faith in, in younger players for this World Cup. As the youngest player in the squad, what, what, what do young people bring to it? What, what can you bring to this squad? Um, it's a tough question. Uh, I, th I think I have a lot of aspects in my game, um, not just on the field. I feel like off the field, um, I can be a good mate to all the boys. But on the field, I just um, back my skill and I back myself completely. So I, can, I think I can bring a lot to this team. When did you first watch the World Cup? What are your earliest memories? Um, I remember going um, over to uh, England for the 2015 um, World Cup. Uh, yeah, that was unreal. Um, watching a lot of the boys that are in this squad right now, so it's yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, Max, when you say you were there for that, were you there as part of an organised like playing group or did you just go with your folks or friends or what was the kind of set up there no nah, i was just just with my family just went for a family holiday just 
yeah, around around England, watching the World Cup games. So it was pretty cool. And how did the World Cup atmosphere kind of grab you at that point? Um, well, I've always like I always loved footy. Uh, I played it all growing up, so the love was always there, and it was just amazing seeing how the crowds just roaring at everything that happens during the games. It's awesome. Thank you. Um, Isaac, congratulations. Um, could you talk us through how you found out? Um, and also, I guess, what, like, there's a few kind of candidates for that, that position. Why you think Eddie or what he might have told you, the reason why he's kind of opted for you, what you bring that maybe some of the others who've missed out, Tony? Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, I was about to head into a little team meeting over at the force yesterday when I got the call. And, um, yeah, it was a bit of a shock, a bit of a surprise. But I guess, as Max said, you always sort of keep on to that hope. And as I did, and then, yeah, I guess, speaking to Eddie, I guess something that I can bring difference. I guess a lot of energy, a lot of, I guess, impact. The way I like to play the game, I like to run, physicality, a bit of voice, and not also on the field, or away from it as well. So... Hopefully I can do that um, over the next couple of months. He's talked about you being an option on the wing as well. What does, did that come as a surprise? Are you happy with that? Is that part of your game that you, you know, you rate as well? Or? Oh, I um, hope so, mate. But yeah, I've been there before a couple of years ago at the Brumbies, which is a bit of a blessing in disguise. But yeah, as, as I said, mate, it's, you're playing footy at the end of the day. And if it's on the wing or if it's that half, I'll be, I'll be happy. Um, just one more. Uh, I think yesterday you said you thanked a lot of the coaches who believed in you and some coaches who perhaps didn't believe you in you. I, I, I might have misheard it, but that's kind of how it sounded like. Who are the coaches who have believed in you um, and who, who like, do you really owe it to, to that you're here at the moment? Um, I, th I think you've you got to go to every coach that's ever coached me from, you know, first 15 rugby to, to, to where I was in club rugby in Sunnybank and then sort of each... Um, each grade I went up because you, you take something from each coach and obviously over this year and last year being at the force I've had two two great coaches in Sambo and Simon Cron which has taught a lot to my game and added a few things so yeah I guess every coach I've sort of taken things from. And have there been people who didn't perhaps believe in you? Have you felt that along the way? Oh I, I always think yeah um, you always hear when you're too small and all that sort of Stuff, but nothing, nothing too personal. I guess it's just to to prove myself right rather than prove people wrong. Thank you, um, Isaac. Just wanted to check that timeline. You said yesterday you were going to go in for a meeting. Is that right, or do you mean the day before? Would because that would have, that would be a pretty quick turnaround. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, Thursday, Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Sorry, mate. <laughs> okay, well, good. no worries. <laughs> you might have been on a plane the same day. Yeah. Um, has has any given you guys any any indication around? whether he'll send other guys over to France ahead of that warm-up game? And, like, do you see any kind of jostling for spots at all? I know you, a World Cup squad's been named, but do you think there'll be extra guys floating around looking to try and push their way in if that is impossible? Uh, oh, I'm not too sure, to be honest with you, mate. I think, yeah, I'm not too sure. No, uh, just last one from me, Max. Um, like, your name sort of had been touted around this squad. We all just thought you were out injured um you're a young guy and you've got a big career ahead of you are you worried at all about being rushed back so soon i mean do you think about that given it's probably your first real serious injury you've had to overcome um no not really because the thing is it's not i'm not really rushing back my injury um like i'm taking the right amount of rehab time like i'm not rushing back into anything like we're taking a slow here at training um but yeah it's just I know he feels really good and yeah, I'm not rushing back into anything, so I'm not worried. As Isaac, for yourself, at what stage do those conversations start happening with Wallabies officials and Eddie where you all of a sudden start thinking, hey, I'm, I'm on the radar here. If I keep playing well, I could put myself in contention for a camp or even a Wallabies call up. Uh, yeah, I guess it sort of started uh, sort of at the couple rounds into the super season. Um, sort of had a phone call from Eddie and he just sort of Gave me some saying some things to work on and said he sort of liked the way I played and that was a bit of a bit of a call that you want to hear halfway through the year and I guess I just kept chipping away and working on what I needed to and I guess yeah small little conversations here and there. When you started the year from the bench of the force, what was the, do you think were those key aspects that why you, why you that starting job and it eventually got you to this point where you're heading to France? 
I guess, um, yeah, I can only control what I can control. And coming off the bench, I, I did my best. And I guess that impact, I guess if you're starting or if you come off the bench, you've got to bring what you can bring. And I guess it turned around middle of the season and got to do what I can do from the start, which was something I was proud of and hopefully can uh, keep it rolling. Just finally for me, that Australia A experience, coming off the bench, playing a, you know, a World Cup quality team, what does that do just for your confidence and showing that you do belong at this test level? Yeah, I think it's good. I think when you get in the mix with um, very high talented players, it it sort of makes your job easier as a nine, you know, you're, you're playing with some world class players and yeah, obviously that experience was real good for my for me. Anything further Hi, on my Sorry, Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. Isaac, um, Max mentioned that he went to the uh, the 2015 World Cup as a, as a punter. Um, have you been on World Cup before or what are your memories of watching World Cups on TV? Um, man, mine would probably be 2003 World Cup watching watching the Wallabies back then. But no, obviously, yeah, as Max said, I love my rugby. In 2015, I was watch, I was in um, Singa Singapore playing some sevens, watched it over there. But yeah, watched it closely, watched, loved the Wallabies and just stoked to be part of this group moving forward. If you hadn't made this team, how, what, what were your plans to... To, um, to watch the World Cup. And have you had to change anything? Have you had to, like, bail on a mate's bucks party or anything because you, you need it in France? Oh, I actually had a mate's wedding in September, but I told him at the start of the year, mate, if, if I'm at the World Cup, I won't be able to come. And uh, I guess it, it's worked out. Isaac, when um, you weren't in the uh, squads for the test this season, did that did you kind of get a sense that maybe it wasn't going to happen or did... did you know, was there communication or, or belief the whole way along that, that this could still work? Um, I think to myself, it, I always thought it still could work, but I guess you've got to be a realist. And I might, might have thought that um, th there wouldn't have been much change throughout the squad, but I guess I always kept on to a little bit of hope. And when that phone call came, um, I was over the moon. Max, how far is Wally away from you? And are you aware of the, uh, the punishments if you lose that guy throughout the World Cup, being the new youngest? Yeah, yeah I'm very very aware of the, the punishments there. Um, but no, he's hidden away at the moment. <laughs> There's cool history, though. Like, if you do play, you'll be the youngest ever. Um, do you think about that stuff? I mean, it, it must blow your mind a little bit, given what's happened, given you're in school last year. Uh, yeah, it's obviously yeah, pretty cool. Pretty amazing experience, um, especially to do it this young. Um, but no, I try, I try to keep it at the back of my mind, not think about it too much. Anything further on Longos? Yeah, Isaac, uh, Matty of the Cairns Post here, mate. Um, it, a word that's been thrown around, I guess, for your journey um, with your selection is um, perseverance. Um, can you can you talk to, I guess, how that's developed over the years from when you were you were a young kid up at Port Douglas and then you, you earned your crack at Sunnybank and earned your way through the, the ranks, um, not necessarily being the first pick, but always fighting and, and always playing your way through. Can you talk a little bit about that journey and, I guess, developing that, the perseverance for what you become known as? Yeah, I guess it's been a, it's been a long journey for me. Um, as you said, it's been a few, uh, few journey, but um, I think for me personally, I always sort of had a goal to be a part of this team. Um, I guess you all have a dream when you're, when you're young and mine was definitely to play for the Wallabies since I've been about five years old and I guess I didn't want to take no for an answer so I kept at it and I think if you knock hard enough on the door hopefully you'll finally open. Nothing else online guys? Got anything to follow up there Matt? I'm good mate. You're good? Thanks, Isaac. Zoe, did you have anything in there? Yeah, can we move the laptop? Is that okay? Sure. Or just slightly, oh, just skyline. Yeah, thanks. All right. Mine are obviously going to be about dumb, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> They've already covered the rest. Um, I guess if you both could answer it, what does it mean to be in Darwin and, and how are you coping with the heat? Um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool being up here. Um, it's, bloody, it's, yeah, it's bloody hot. Um, I fell to the training this morning. Um, and I didn't even do most of the stuff that the boys are doing. So, and I was I was in a world of hurt. It was bloody hot. But no, nah, it's it's unreal being up up here, um, seeing the culture up here, especially with the the Aboriginal ceremony yesterday. Um, it was really cool experiencing that, and yeah, it's just unreal being up here.
yeah, as, as you were saying, I think it's awesome we're connecting with different parts of Australia and um, now yesterday was an awesome ceremony and I guess the heat, I'm from far north Queensland so I'm actually enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, obviously you've got the community event this afternoon, um, you know there's a big union uh, following up here, are you looking forward to meeting some of your fans here? Yeah, definitely. I think yesterday there was a few juniors at our at our um, opening ceremony. So to get around more of them uh, this afternoon should be good. And I guess you always want to grow the game of rugby. And if it's if it's great up here, it's great for us. Um, Max, obviously um, we we're talking about how young you are. You know, you didn't get here without the support of your family. What does it mean to them? Um, yeah, it means the world to my family. Um, and. They also mean the world to me. Like I wouldn't be here without them. All those car rides out to out to rugby competitions. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be here without them.